Hey guys, Lisa Callagy here to share with you a video on how to run a checkpoint group session that's using a existing build test in Study Island. So this video, we're going to kind of pop back and forth between the teacher's um, page and perspective and the student's page and perspective um, when running a group session so that you can see what it looks like from both places. So you feel more confident when you're um, facilitating a group session with your students. All right, so let's get started. I'm here on a teacher's Study Island class manager page and under her class assignments in the class page and assignments um, tab, you'll see some assignments that she has ready to go with her students. Now, the one that we're looking for here is the checkpoint. So this is the one that we're going to start. But before we do that, I'm going to pop over to the student's account. And you could see the student is logged in. And from here, for, in order for the student to access the group session, he has to go over to my classes in the left hand menu bar and then scroll and find the class that the assignment has been assigned to. So it's his social studies section 302 class. And here is that group session. So notice uh, the student does have a start button. However, students cannot access, you notice if I click, on the start, it says the teacher has not started the session. So students do not have access to the group session until the teacher starts it. So let's go ahead and do that. Popping back over to the teacher account here. So from her class assignments area, we will come over to the actions column next to the assessment or assignment we want to activate here. We're going to click on the first icon that will launch the group session it will ask you if this is the group session that you want to start <clears throat> along with the title of that group session and warns you that once the session is started students will need to access or log in to the group session after you've started it so we're going to click on yes and this is what it looks like from the teacher's perspective so let's just quickly go over that um, and then we'll pop over to the student side and, and log in from there. So you'll see over here, starting in the top left hand side of your page, you have some arrow buttons to toggle through the assignment or assessment. You have the page number and you're able to access the questions uh, by clicking on the page number button and a drop down window appears where then you can select between the questions. You have a, a toolbar here where you're able to increase or decrease the size of the text. You're able to start text to speech and stop the text to speech. You're able to use a ruler, a protractor, and you can also comment on a question. You can click on showing the correct answer and group session results, which I will demonstrate both of those to you and after we start the group session. Start polling is where you start actually uh, releasing the questions for the students to see. You have popping back up to that top menu bar, a printable worksheet. You can save for later. So if in the middle of this group session, you have to stop uh, and you don't want to end the session, you want to save it for later, you click on that. And then to end the session completely, click on the end session button. You do have an answered correct and incorrect window here. It tells you the number of students that have answered the question and out of those students, how many answered the question correct and how many answered the question incorrect. And then you have your um, collapsible student list. It will show you the students that have answered the questions with this icon next to their name, students that have not answer the question as of yet will have this icon next to their name and as your students log into this <clears throat> assessment or once you start the assessment um, you'll see your students able to log in and then you'll see if they are 
<clears throat> currently logged in correctly. So we're gonna, I'll demonstrate that to you from the student perspective once we go in. All right, so let's pop over now to the student's account where we will start this group session. So now all it does is it logs the student into that group session and it, it has this, the question grayed out. They can't really do anything here. And it's telling the student that the teacher will begin polling soon. So that's as far as it goes until you as the teacher hit the start polling button. But I just want you to see that as that student access the group session uh, assignment, their name pops up in this list. So you're going to want to wait until all of your students are in this list before you start polling. You can collapse this list. Um, if you need to project your questions because you selected that when setting up your group session and you need to project your questions and the students will only see answers on their or answer selection choices on their devices, um, you have the ability to expand this list here so you don't have to, students don't see, but you would want to um, un, I guess, project or remove your computer from the projection device when you're looking at certain things and you'll see which, which one of those things are as we go through. So let's start polling. Once I click on start polling, uh, you'll, uh, we'll pop over to the students page and you'll see now they have access to the question where they will fill in the answer. So this will be, and and then click submit. Students also have the ability to um, access some tools here, highlighter tools, they have a scratch pad and decrease and increase text size. And they can end the session. They don't, you wouldn't want them to do that. That will remove them from the session. When they're finished answering their question, they click on submit. Okay, answer submitted. Now wait for your teacher to move to the next question. So now that student is finished see what the teacher sees. They see one answered question and one out of those questions, that one question is answered correctly. You can expand that. Um, it'll show you that this student has answered the question with that icon. Any student that hasn't in that list would have this icon. And then it shows one out of the 14 students have answered the question. Okay, so we're gonna stop the polling here and we're gonna take a look at the correct answer. So this will now turn the question into the question with the correct answers. And then you have the ability to click on the explanation to go through the explanation. If you'd like with your students, you could reset the question so the answer is no longer uh, viewable. Uh, and then you have the ability up here to show your group session results. It will show all of your students, and then you'll see a star next to the student's name under the question for those students that answer the question correct. Obviously, you're not gonna wanna be projecting this information in front of your class, so either wait until the, your group session is, is ended or remove your device from the projection screen to assess whether or not this question gave your students some difficulty and you want to kind of reteach right here um, with this question. Okay, when you're ready to move on to the next question, click on next question and then start polling. You'll notice if we pop back over to the student, once you go over to the next question, they kind of get a viewing of it. However, they're unable to work within that question until you as the teacher click on the start polling and then the student has the ability to select their answer. <clears throat> Once you're finished with your session, 
Um, if you finish the entire session, you want to click on end session. What that will do will turn in the session. So then you're able to see the results again from your class page and assignments page in Study Island, clicking on the graph, bar graph, to the right of the assessment that you just gave. So this is going to show you the, um, the score for each individual student. It breaks it down by the different, um, the different standards that the questions came from. And then it gives you a total here of correct and incorrect. And at the bottom, a total for your entire class. And then you could do an item analysis to work through the question that was answered incorrectly the most by your students to see which question gave them the most difficulty. And then you can go ahead and reteach with some strategies um, on that question again. At a later time, if you don't want to do it while you are within the group session. All right, guys, so this has been a video on running a checkpoint group session using a built test. You're also able to use a um, study island test. So practice questions you're able to do when you're building a checkpoint where you pick out the questions for a checkpoint or you allow Study Island to randomly select questions from a topic of your choice and um, you assign it to your students as a checkpoint group session. All right, I hope this helps. Have a great day.